and we're the Texas Southern University debate team. Encourage me! I'm young! Hello, welcome to METV. I am very, very privileged to be here with the great Dr. Freeman from Texas Southern University. I told you that we were going to get this and we are getting it for you. Dr. Freeman, how are you? Oh, I'm quite well, thank you. Good, good. Um, you know, we're here for the Dr. Asia Hear You Conference and I just had to, you know, get somewhat of an interview, see you in action, you know, because you've been here so long. Uh, one of the questions I would like to ask is, uh, can you just give us a little bit of how long you have been teaching debate and been at this fine institution? I came to Texas Southern University in 1949, but I didn't come to teach debate. I came to teach philosophy. I came merely as an experiment. I wanted to convince myself that either a person trained in religion could or could not succeed on a state college campus where there was separation of church and state. I did for nine months. The experiment worked. I realized that it could be done, and I was ready to go back to Virginia. But Dr. Araho Harold O'Neill, the first president, and Dr. Ina Bolin cornered me and said, Tom, you cannot go back. You must stay. And so they convinced me that the opportunities were so great here that I couldn't afford to leave. In the meantime, there were four boys in my logic class. I taught logic, not debate. But I gave an assignment which involved debating. And they went to the Indian the students and said, Oh, we found a coach. And I came back, Oh, no, no, I'm going back to Virginia. I no, no, no. And they kept on after me and finally got me to consent. But I consented on a condition. If you four fellows will be on the team, then I will coach it. And one of those four fellows is a retired provost from this university. Another one is a retired attorney. Two are retired attorney. One is deceased now. But I worked with those young men only one semester and then went to my alma mater and we won both decisions at my alma mater and from then on the teams developed year after year after year winning at the large prestigious schools who had programs for a number of years and ours was infant and they won and I suspect that it's because of their reception that I decided that the nine months would extend. Now, I never dreamed that they would extend to 59 years, no. <laughs> but I was willing to work after the nine months. We, we know uh, you have been here for quite some time. And the other question uh, actually would be, how and what it was like. Most people don't know that you taught the cast of the great debate. How was it to, what was it really like to teach a full cast on debating? Well, I don't think we taught the full cast. We provided some learning experiences for the actors who were involved in the debates. Uh, and there were just four persons. We had um, what was known, what Denzel called boot camp. Uh, and try in two days to try to get the rudiments of debate. Now his concern was to enable the actors to be so attuned to what was involved in debate, that it would not appear as though they were acting, that it was real. And when we went through the process, 
and we completed the training, he was pleased because it had worked. And really, his actors worked harder to achieve the degree of excellence that they achieved than many of our students. In fact, one of his group debated against our group and won the decision <laughs> against our group. They took the work seriously. Now, all I really did was to coordinate. I, did, I didn't do anything, you see. It, those, we had three of my assistant coaches, uh, Tarek Brown, uh, uh, Lachelle Sargent and Claire Bailey to really take them through the ropes. And all I did was sit back and watch them grow and develop. And Denzel was quite pleased with what he saw and what he witnessed. Yes. Now, he was not in the workshop himself. We had interaction, but the students uh, interacted with the actors in the movie. Do you think? See, because a lot of times, a lot of people, a lot of genres don't do the right interview. What would your legacy mean to our community, in your words? It is really hard to say what it would mean because the legacy is not over. That's it's right. still in process. I don't know what is like a be Now, somebody who is a beneficiary of the legacy would be in a better position to say what the legacy is. Well, that's good. You don't, you don't do a lot of talking about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Most people would jump all over it, you know. But you see, there is a, there is a song, yes, that my work, You want to know something about Thomas F. Freeman? Think about Martin Luther King, Barbara Jordan, Otis King, uh, Bishop Turner, and the students who are coming along now. For all of them bear some mark <laughs> of T.F. <Tia> Freeman, <laughs> which we know. It's a huge blessing. It's a huge blessing, and uh, you know it is. It really is. As I, I can't state enough. I really appreciate uh, this opportunity, you know, to uh, to share some yeah. of what you do on a daily basis with the people. Yeah. And you know, we only ask one thing. We asked your class, so we got to get it out of you. Mm -hmm. We need you to look into that camera and say, "Encourage me. I'm young." I could not say that in light of the facts, but encourage me, for I am young and intend to remain young for years to come. <laughs>